In this presentation we are going to look at the Rayleigh distribution. In particular we are going to look at how to use inverse transform sampling to create an algorithm to simulate deviates from the Rayleigh distribution. Essentially what we're going to do is create a random number generator for the Rayleigh distribution that will create a sample that is consistent with the characteristics of the Rayleigh distribution. So just to start off with, I have some packages loaded up, distributions, random and statistics. Actually, I don't know if I use them a whole lot in this presentation, but I just have them on sort of permanent standby for all of my Julia presentations that relate to probability distributions, because there's bound to be something handy there. Okay, so the Rayleigh distribution with scale parameter sigma has the probability density function f of x sigma equals x over sigma squared times e to the minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. It's a bit of a complicated one there, okay? And that is where x is greater than 0. Now, this is related to the normal distribution via the property that if x and y, which are two normal random variables with mean 0 and variance sigma squared, that they're, if they are independently normally distributed with the same characteristics okay then we can say that the square root say that, then we can say that the square root of x squared plus y squared is a really random variable with parameter sigma which is the standard deviation that x and y are both subject to or characterized by okay to specify the distribution we simply use really okay capital r a y l e i g h Okay, so that's the Rayleigh distribution with unit scale. Now, the default setting for sigma is 1. So if you leave the brackets uh, blank or nothing between the, the brackets, that means the sigma is assumed to be 1. Okay, if you specify a value, that would allow sigma to be 4. Okay, or something like that. We'll do that later on. Okay, now parameter and scale. We'll leave that for another time because we don't really use it in this presentation. What is important here is the cumulative distribution function. Capital F, F of X and Sigma equals 1 minus the exponential of minus X squared divided by 2 Sigma squared for X between 0 and infinity. So it has positive numbers as the support, or X equals 0 as well. Okay, so the cumulative distribution function is the key item with regard to calculating how, or, or generating our algorithm, okay? We're going to use inverse transform sampling. So the cumulative distribution function takes some value in the interval 0 to 1. And we can simulate that with a uniform deviate u. So u is a randomly generated uniform random variable and it takes some value 0 to 1. So we're going to let that take that as our starting point. And we're going to let that equal to the expression for the cumulative distribution function. 1 minus the... 1 minus e to the minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. So if I rearrange that algebraically, I can say 1 minus u is the exponential of minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. Now, this is the important thing, very important thing. Because u and 1 minus u are essentially the same random variable, they can be interchanged when necessary. So that means that if it simplifies the algorithm. So that means I can change 1 minus u and just rewrite that as u because essentially it is the same structurally and in terms of probability distribution. So u is equal to the exponential of minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. So let's get the logarithm of both sides. Log of u equals minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. Multiply both sides by minus 2 times sigma squared. Okay, so get, the, rid of, get rid of that minus sign and get rid of the denominator there. So I have minus 2 times sigma squared times log of u, and that is equal to x squared. Get the square root of both sides. So x equals the square root of minus 2 sigma squared times log of u. Okay, sorry, I think I said 2s squared, 2 sigma squared. Okay. So that is our algorithm. So I'm going to set sigma here equal to 4. Okay, just to set up a value that on an ongoing basis. Let that equal to 4. Now, just some remarks about how to do the calculations with Julia. So we're going to let u just generate five 
uh, observations from the uniform distribution. Let's click on that. There we go. All between 0 and 1. Now, I want to get the logarithm of those values of u. Just so I'm going to use log, but watch out for that dot. Okay? That's the element-wise operation uh, across the array. So we all get a series of negative numbers there. So remember, if x is less than 1, log of x is going to be negative. Okay, so that's that's to be expected. Square root of all the values of u, so square root dot u. So essentially what I'm saying is don't forget the dot. Okay, between the function and u. So, implementation. So let's pick out... 10,000 uh, observations from the uniform distribution. Let's click on that. 10,000 there. I don't need to print it out. So I'll just rerun it again. 10,000 is quite a lot. So I don't really need a seed. I could put in a seed, but I don't really need to. And this is the expression in terms of Julia of what I have written above. Just go back up here. Go back to this. So, x equals the square root of minus 2 sigma squared times log of u. So, there we go. Square root of minus 2 times sigma squared times log of u. That's it. Straightforward enough. Just remember the dots for the multiplication and the log and the square root. You don't need it there because that's a scalar. There we go. Let's run that, and I'll print it out. There we go. So, now, I want to test the fit. So I have the random numbers generated as an array called, a vector there called x. So let's just test that fit. So what I can do here is just see, does it match up with the Rayleigh distribution and what parameters parameters would it give you if it was a Rayleigh distribution? So let's test that. Fish Rayleigh sigma equals four point zero one one. That's pretty good. We'll be very happy with that. We could try it out with something else actually, just to sort of give you a counterexample to see does it work with the Weibull distribution? It's going to break. No, see it doesn't work. Let's go back to Rayleigh. So it just, uh, just does it match with what we expected, sigma equal 4. It seems to be a very good match. So that's good. I think things are work looking good here. What we can do is compare the sample statistics of x to the analytical solution. So the mean of our sample is 5.025. The analytical mean of the Rayleigh distribution, 5.01. The variance of the sample 6.9328, the variance of the Rayleigh distribution with sigma equal 4, 6.86, close enough. The median of the sample is 4.7077, and the analytical median of the Rayleigh distribution is 4.709. So, I think we've done a good job. It matches up pretty well with what how the Rayleigh distribution should work in practice so let's just go back up there to that part there so that was the inverse transform sampling component of it there and that was the implement implementation i was able to do it in one line okay i could even sort of put that in there but just to not squeeze too much in, into one place. I just left it alone. Okay, good. We'll leave it there.